see. All right. Raise your hand if you like to have more wealth. Raise your hand if you like to have more wine. Oh, well, today because of budget constraint, we don't have wine. But that was a trick question. But I, a few months ago, I asked these questions. And um, you know, this is a very conservative society. So I asked this question, raise your hand if you like to have more wine. And one guy sitting in the back of the room with the headgear instinctively raises his hand. And everybody started staring at him. What? You want more wine? You want more wine? He said, no. Then why do you raise your hand? I thought he asked me, do you want more wife? <laughs> so today there's, I will share with you some wisdom. With that you can create some wealth. And with that probably you can get more wine or more wives or more boyfriends. So in the next few minutes I have, I've been tasked to tell you how to become the world champion of public speaking. Would you be interested in that? Yes. All right. But truth be told, I am the most unlikely person to become the world champion of public speaking because by nature, I am very shy, reserved and introverted. And on top of that, English is not my native language. Technically, English is my third language. Now, do you remember a time when you were 13 years old? Raise your hand if you've ever been 13 years old. All right. All right. All of you. Okay. <laughs> do you remember you used to have summer vacation, a vacation of one month or two months long? No. Raise your hand. One month? Yes? One month, yeah. So what did you used to do during that vacation? One month vacation? Nothing. Watch TV. Summer, uh, watch TV? Play Sorry? On Work. What else? Play on the streets with kids. Play on the street with the kids. <laughs> now we have a home? <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, what, what do you used to do? Play games. Play games. Okay, my father had... So I, used, I grew up in India. My father had a very different idea. He enrolled me for a summer camp. And uh, it was a day camp, so I go to summer camp in the morning, go back home. And guess what I learned in the summer camp? Arts, history, <laughs> science. So that's what I know how I spend my summer. That's a very cost-effective solution for us. So far. Yeah, so far, yeah. So I listened to all lectures throughout the day. And on the final day of the camp, everyone was given to a task. The task was the course leader or the program leader asked everyone to come up to the front of the class and tell the class what you want to become when you grow up. So I thought this was a chance to impress more girls <laughs> by saying something amazing. So one by one people came to the front of the class and started sharing their dreams. And when my chance came, I came and stood in the front and I started with a pause. And I followed up with a Pause. And every, all the girls started leaning forward. They thought I'm going to say something very profound. And my friends in the front row said, Why don't you say something? And the course leader said, Say something. And I stood there looking around for about five minutes. And the course leader didn't want to prolong her suffering. So she said, You can go and take a seat. Now, guess what did I do after that? You paused. Pause. <laughs> At home, I pause. After that, I did nothing for the next 20 years. Of course, graduated, started working, but I never, I found others getting out of me, but I've never figured out how to express myself, get others to listen to you, get others to agree with me. That's a skill I didn't learn. But I knew that's a skill I had to learn, but I didn't learn. But then magic happened after about 20 years. Before I tell you the magic, what happened is something changed in me that I, have, I got invited to speak to audiences as big as 20,000. That means people are sitting as far as the eyes could see. I'm invited to speak in front of people from more than 142 countries. I've got opportunity to share the stage with the heads of state, prime ministers and presidents, of course, doing stand-up comedy and other, several other things. Re remember, this, this was before I became the world champion of public speaking. Because after I began the world champion, people say, oh, you can't do it now, you're world champion. But this is before. Of course, I also began the world champion. So the question is, what changed? What changed? What, what is the magic recipe I learned that shifted my prospects, shifted my opportunities, shifted my profile? Of course, there are three things I'd like to share. Number one, you change your hairstyle. <laughs> I don't know why after you shave your head, people started to respect you. Only they notice you walk in the room and say, oh, somebody has come. <laughs> yeah, so you need to buy a razor, Gillette. 
Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Number two, I rededicated myself to the art of public speaking. I realize this is a, if, if you have only one skill, you can time to learn only one skill, learn this skill because this skill is a foundation for all other skills you can learn. You can get others to listen to you, agree with you, get others to follow you. This is a very powerful skill you can learn. And this is a skill you can learn. Of course, I learned neuroscience, psychology, physiology, storytelling, humor, and all other techniques that help me to build the foundation in public speaking because I rededicated myself to the art of public speaking. Of course, after I became the world chairman, I've interviewed on major channels like BBC, CNBC, along with the very famous figures. But of course, people often ask me, Manoj, how do you become the world champion of public speaking? So that's why I wrote a book, which is called How to Become the World Champion of Public Speaking. So I don't want to repeat the same thing again. By the way, this book is available online for 30 years dollars, for about 40 Singapore dollars. People like Wilson was one of the first guys to buy this book. And let me share with you what is inside that book. So here are the, write this down, there are five ingredients you need to have to become the world champion of public speaking or if you are just enthusiastic enough to become a better speaker. By the way, when I sold the book, book is bought by three group of people who are, some people who are totally new to public speaking, some people who are experienced and some people who are masters. So it serves all the group. So write this down, the five ingredients you need. Number one is mindset, mindset. Now guess, raise your hand if you are a contestant. Have you ever, ever competed ever? Okay, there's a lot of people. Now, if you are competing or speaking against a world champion of public speaking, do you stand a chance to win the contest? Yes. 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 Right? Yes, but most people do. But do you get, do you get afraid to speak next to the world champion? No. No. no all like, it's like all, tut all tutored answers. <laughs> all right. So the point is this. The world champion might not be in the right form. Forget his or her speech, go over time and disqualify himself or herself. The question is, the point is you don't give up before even the game started. That's good. So it's a mindset game. It's a mindset game. Okay. So number one. So number one is mindset. Number two is message. So this is something very important. You should be able to convey something that anyone anywhere in the world can understand because this is a global audience. People have different levels of understanding and depth of experience and knowledge. So number two is message. Have a message if anyone can understand. Number three is mechanics. Of course, mechanics has 21 steps. That's a very that's what the meat of the book has also, and the content you need, the content delivery, what you need to do, etc. How to create emotional connection. For example, I am next month, the whole of next month, I'm going to Europe. Every day I'm speaking in different city all around Europe. All right. And they have very different understanding of level of English. Some of them know English better than me, in like in the United Kingdom <laughs> and other places. People may not know English as well as I do, right? So I need to be able to connect with people. So the key is to create an emotional connection with your listeners. So the number one step in mechanics is the whatever the content you share should follow what I call the content connection criteria. The content connection criteria is your message or the content has to be valuable, relatable, believable and actionable. So that's number one. Of course, there are 20 other steps. Number four, I'm rushing because the timer is ticking. Number four is, what is number three? Mechanics. Mechanics. What is number one? Mindset. Number two? Message. Okay, number four is mentors. Having a mentor. You see, you could spend your lifetime trying to figure out something by yourself or you sit with someone who has walked the path. You probably you can spend 10 minutes. So even I, I'm as I introduced as a leadership expert, but when I got into leadership, a lot of you have, people have this book, The Mousetrap Way. One of the things I did is that was another ladder I was climbing. I went to the top people I could find in that field and then ask them and learn from them. What I figured out is when you go and talk to the masters, they can teach you in 10 minutes, but you can't figure out yourself in 10 years. All right. So the point is try to find a mentor in a club, in your area, in your district division, ask for help. So someone who can shorten your learning curve. So when, when I was competing to be the world champion, I used to go to the US to speak. And then once I met a district director in um, 
California. He said, Manoj, if you want to be a club champion, ask the club champion. If you want to be area champion, ask area champion. If you want district champion, ask district champion. If you want to be world champion, ask the world champion. So he just said, because every level has a different level of understanding and perspective. So don't be afraid to ask for help. So number five. So what's number four? Mentors. Mentors. What's number five? Oh, this guy has got my book, so he's ready. Okay, mastermind. So, you, you always try to think this is a solo game. It's always powerful. So I would say embrace the power of many so that you can shorten your journey. If you can imagine what can happen if five of you get together, two of you get together and say, now I'm going to master this topic. I'm going to master humor. I'm going to master public speaking. I'm going to master leadership. I'm going to master storytelling. You see, your power multiplies because you're learning from each other. So I was part of powerful mastermind groups. And I'm also, after I became the world champion, I also created a worldwide group of contestants around the world who come together and share and learn from each other. The learning is much, much faster because you're learning. So I think the, I don't know what stand in front of you in the result. So if you're interested to get a copy of a few copy at the back, a lot of you have the copy on the internet. And I would suggest you buy two copies. So buy one for yourself or one for a friend and create a short mastermind group and you can build on with that. So with that, my call to action for you is to believe that your stories are valuable and there is someone out there who want to hear your story. It doesn't have to be spectacular or sensational. It has to be authentic. Your own story. You have to dig it out and share. So speak up and take the stage and I hope one day you will take the big stage. And on that day, I would like to be sitting in your audience, listening to your stories and learning from your experience. I look forward to that day. Thank you.